Hacker Twins here. One of our subscribers who comments below will have a chance to win this blue robot arm. We're going to discuss pressure sensors and all different robot fingers. We're going to show you some updates to our project and run lots of tests. So let's get started. I 3D printed this black flexible finger using Overture TPU. It has channels in it so I could run a wire through that resembles how the tendons work in a human hand. When I pull this green wire in the finger, it's going to bend it just like a human finger works. I was going to use two wires to complete the circuit, but I went with a different design. So let's show you how it actually works on a human. My fingers move because there's tendons that run up my forearm all the way up to my elbow. And when I move my fingers, you could actually see the tendons move around. This works great, but it requires multiple motors. Because if the finger's too far away, the tip won't actually touch what it's trying to grab. And we need our sensor to make contact with what we're grabbing. So instead of inwards and outwards, it needs to pivot. Let me show you an arm I built a year ago. This is a really common design and it should look familiar. This is because it's very reliable but it's only able to pick up specifically what it's designed and shaped to grab. I want to be able to pick up a cell phone and even really tiny objects as well. I have an old version of this with two buttons hidden inside of it, but I found these momentary button switches that let you put on your own caps. So I can 3D print something with a larger surface instead of this little white button that came with it because these buttons let me press them in and complete the circuit from almost any angle. See it? It's clicking every time. This is really reliable. TPU and PLA can be kind of slippery, and this blue robot arm is made with Overture PLA+. Plus. So I got this double-walled closed insulation foam with sticky bet. So I can have a little bit of padding because when you press the button, the code is designed to stop the servo from moving in so it doesn't burn up. Snaps into place perfect. Let's talk about thin film pressure sensors. With our ESP32, we're able to attach a bunch of these to our robot arm. These sensors come in lots of different shapes and sizes. And the channels on them might look sophisticated, but regardless of their size, it's all just one sensor. Using this Bluetooth connection, I can detect the voltage of the analog pin that is connected to the sensor. I'm going to push down on it as hard as I can and try and max this thing out at 3.3 volts. You could technically use these as a scale to weigh things. It's kind of hard to place the water bottle on here, but I'll flip it around and get a better rating of how much pressure it's applying. ESP32s can also use cameras, but that'll be for a different project. The twist wrist is an absolutely necessary feature. Depending on the orientation of what you're picking up, it's almost impossible to grab it without a twist. And we're able to run the wires through the rails of the button fingers. Instead of hot gluing these buttons onto the fingers like we did last time, I designed a channel where they slide into. A mistake I made was making the spinning base three and a half inches. It used to be four. But don't worry, in the future, we've already made a design that's five inches in diameter, and that works out great. We've decided to do 115 degrees on the wrists. This allows us to use a cheap and an underpowered SG90 servo. So we're on our way to having a more organized project. One of the flaws of a 360 degree continuous servo is it doesn't really understand what position it's in. It only runs for a certain amount of time at a certain speed. This actually makes the code kind of complicated for controlling the base on how it spins around. And I'm going to check to see the temperature of our gripper servo motor because I've burnt these out in the past. But this is nice and cool, which means we're not applying any more movement to the motor once a button is pressed. But I am able to grab this little button and place it down on the green 3D printed boat. Now I can pick up the boat and get caught on a wire. That's all we have for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hacker Twins out.